What would you say is the proudest you've ever been in your life? You know, other than, you know, of course, always my relationship with the Lord. That's always priority. But I suppose in thinking was my assistance with Tamarcuson when he graduated from college because I thought that was a big goal that we couldn't do, but together we did it. Now, you raised Tamarcus. Um, you didn't have any children of your own. Right. Do you feel like that was God's doing? I honestly do. I honestly do. Um, it seems I remember um, when Adrian, my niece, became pregnant at a very young age. And, you know, it just seemed like trying to imagine a, almost a child herself with a child. So, you know, I had really helped in the raising of Adrian along with my parents. And to, Mar to Marcus was sort of a, just a natural that we took under our wings and loved and tried to raise him in the ways, bringing them up in the ways of the Lord, along with my parents, and then just helping him, you know, to be in his life to help him. Okay. Um, what would you say, if you feel like sharing, what was the lowest point in your life? Uh, you know, at first I thought it was the death of my dad, but then when Rosalind passed, it was so hard. But it's gotten, you know, a lot better, but it was very tough, just very tough, you know. But God is good, and so, but it, and he, you know, strengthened us and helped us to go through, but I guess it was just trying to wrap around your head, you know, your baby sister was going, you know. But, you know, I just, the, the how God is just, you know, just carry you through tough times of your life. You know, and just seeing how the girls and Keith are just strength to go on, you know, and blossoming and how Kirby made such a, you know, it's just a, I always told Rosalind it would be beauty for ashes. I think there's a scripture that refers to that. And I just, you know, I just, I just think I could see God was working something through that. And I still think he is. I don't quite understand it all, but, you know, he is. Do you think perhaps God made a mistake? No, no. I, I mean, I know, not just, just by knowing, but, you know, you could, you know, I think, I mean, I knew God was not going to leave her in the condition that we saw her the last few days you know, gasping for every breath and that kind of thing. God is a merciful God and compassionate God. And so um, as tough as it was, I I, I, I know he, he did not make any mistake, never. Mm -mm. Have you ever been mad at God throughout your life? <sighs> no, I'm sure I, you know, you know, Rob, it's interesting you ask that. This week seemed like have been a sort of a, Bizarre kind of week in a way it started off. I kept my nephew in last weekend, little Marcus, and mom and I had to go grocery shopping, and it was just crazy. And somehow or another, I lost my driver's license. So I, um, I, <laughs> I, I had to get them replaced, and then I get to Augusta today, and I smash my sister's car, and I'm like, what? You know, I'm like, what a week of things is going on and I'm like wondering you know what is you know you begin to wonder what but you know it's life I guess and sometimes we think life gonna always keep us up all the time but we've got to trust God when it's pretty bizarre too you know when we're going through. Hey, talk to me about your childhood what's the lowest point you remember in your childhood? In my childhood oh let's see the lowest point in my childhood I mean, I remember just growing up as a happy child, pretty much. Uh, Talk yeah. about that. What's the happiest moment you remember? 
I think it was our summers, I think, you know, we didn't really have a lot of um, neighbors. It was just mainly the siblings, but just being in the summertime, we didn't want to stay indoors. We wanted to always go outside and we make our playhouses and just stay out there all day. And those were some of the happiest days that I remember. Um, just growing up with my brothers and sisters and, um, you know, just life at home, I guess. You know, you had a, it was like you had a, a good life and just really didn't understand how good you did have it. When you got older and got a chance to experience the world, did you ever feel um, that your upbringing was less than? You know, as growing up, I've come to realize it was never less than. It was, it was more than not so much in material things because here, yeah, while those things are nice and you and you have needs and stuff, but just the home life and that it provided. That was looking back. That was the real life. I mean, you know, that was so enriching so nourishing and sometimes you know I hear different ones talking and how they their lives then you, you just know what you had was special I mean you know it just it was it was a a good childhood good rearing good parents to teach you in the ways you know how you should go and stuff how long did it take you to appreciate that oh uh, it probably Probably when I start living on my own and I had to pay those bills and all of that stuff. And, you know, and sort of like sometimes in being alone, I guess, sometimes, I mean, you know, and not having someone there, I guess, all the time. So it's not, it's not a, a prolonged time, but, you know, you appreciate it when you are with family members and stuff. But, yeah, I guess... Um, the older I get, it seems the more I appreciate it, you know, the older I get, you know, and um, uh, you realize that, as the scripture said, you number your days, you know, count your, you know, we, we have to take note to that. Did you, have you accomplished in life everything you wanted to accomplish or everything you thought you wanted to accomplish? Well... I'm content with my life. I mean, I, you know, I, I, looking back, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I never got married, but yet I still, still feel felt like I had like a family, you know. Sort of, I guess, you know. I'll, and I always say, you know, all my family, all my nephews, all y'all are so special to me, so special to me. Um, but I almost feel like by raising Marcus that he was like the son and then the little grandbaby come along, he's like the little grandbaby. So, you know, God has been so good to me. I can't think of anything that um, I regret that, you know, my, the way my life has gone, you know. Very good. What's the happiest you've ever been? The happiest I've ever been. Oh boy, what? Let's see. Um, I'm sure I was glad. Let's see. What? I don't know. I, I can't think. I mean, I guess I'm pretty much always been sort of a content, happy person. Um, maybe when I was finished college or something, I had my job and I was out on my own. Everybody used to say I was glad when I was able to take my first flight and go off on my own at 16 to a big city state like that so probably that was the time you know? and describe like this last question describe how it was growing up on smoky road with your with your siblings oh wow i'm not, I'm not going to, to you know pretend that it was the waltons up on the mountain yes we had some fights and stuff, you know, I, I probably was the one who tried to get away from as much work as I could from the family. 
I was the one who would try, I can remember one day, hiding behind this old-fashioned radio we had. I don't know why I did things like that, but everybody was just looking for me, and they were saying, Barbara, Barbara, and I was just hiding behind there, and mom and dad and the whole family was looking for me, but, and then I decided, oops, I better sort of let them see me, because they were getting nervous, so I sort of pushed myself, it's she is, but I would just love, I don't know, I love to do little pranks like that. Why? I don't know. But, you know, it was fun to me, you know, so, if, you know, you never, it was so, it was the fact there was a household full of kids, you know, you always had somebody to play with. I was most, more close to probably to Dars, my old sister, she and I, you know, she was the big sister. She took care of me. I wanted to, she was going to school. I cried and cried, so my mother let me go to go to school with her, and I ended up starting the school when I was five years old because I wanted to go everywhere with my big sister, Doris. So, you know, that's the story of Barbara, I guess, you know.